Supposing you let your imagination go and really think through what you would like to happen. Imagine the most gorgeous state of bliss that you can conceive. Where there are no worries, no anxiety, no haunting future with unpleasant consequences. You are in control of the whole works and you are sitting on your lotus, perfectly content. And I ask you seriously, is that really what you want? Are you quite sure that's what you want? Imagine now, let's get this situation straight. You've got everything you want. You're in the highest possible spiritual state that you can conceive. And yet, I haven't really surrendered myself. Because I know it all. I, something I don't know. So please, the surprise. You know what would happen? You would find yourself sitting here, in this building, tonight, feeling exactly the way you feel. There's your answer. Because after all, don't you have it all? Look, you have the feeling of yourself. But the feeling of self depends on their being at the same time a contrast, the feeling of other. The self has a certain sensation of being in control of life to some extent through voluntary action. The will seems to have a certain freedom. And yet on the other hand, there are limits to that. And it seems in the end, life sweeps us away and we are overwhelmed by the involuntary. And yet, the voluntary keeps popping up. New voluntaries come into the world with every baby. So you see, you couldn't have the experience you call being a voluntarily acting self without the contrast of the involuntary happening. Now, do you want to be without the involuntary happening? Do you want to get rid of that? All right. If you get rid of it, you won't have the experience of the voluntary self. Or would you like to turn it the other way around? Would you like to have the experience of no voluntary self? And on the other hand, everything just happens. Well, then you say, well, I'm not sure about that. Because then I would feel at first that I was floating. See, that I had no further responsibilities. That I was just walking on air. And we do get that feeling sometimes. If you take the ideas of determinism and fatalism to their final conclusion, you do have that sense of freedom from all responsibility. Freedom from worry and care. And you float along for a while, but it wears off. You don't somehow seem to be able to follow out that philosophy consistently. Especially if you have children. And somehow a society begins to push on you to be responsible, as it pushes on children to be responsible. And so this nagging duality keeps coming back that I cannot realize the nice irresponsible condition of involuntary behavior unless I have the contrast of the possibility of the voluntary and vice versa. Now what does that mean? Obviously it means that these two aspects or sides of our experience which we can call the voluntary and the involuntary, the knower and the known, the subject and the object, 
the self and the other, although appearing to be two, are indeed one. Because you can't have one without the other. And when that state of affairs arises, you know at once that there's a conspiracy. That two things which look as different as different can be are for that very reason the same. Now, you can detect even under those actions of yours which you call voluntary, the voluntary movement of the muscles or of the mind, that there are processes which are not voluntary. You do not will your blood to circulate. You do not control by intention the synapses in your nervous system, and yet you would be incapable of any voluntary action unless those involuntary processes were going on. <coughs> So you see these two things go together and you begin to realize something which is rather difficult to describe, that what you call your experience is a do happening. We don't have good words for this. We have some words which have this sort of sense, like the word cleave which means to stick together, or to hold together, and also to split. And the word sucker in Latin means holy and accursed. And so I would like to propose uh, we all should find some word for a do happening. Because it's all a do happening. That's what Buddhists mean when they talk about karma. The word karma means action. And when something happens to you, be it good or bad, they say it is your karma. That means quite simply, it is your doing. But you say, I didn't mean to do that. No. One school of thought will explain it by saying, but you see, you did something in a former life, or at a former time, which now has this consequence. But that's a very superficial understanding of karma. You don't need to believe in reincarnation to, believe, to understand karma. Karma is simply that you don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That with one aspect you are doing what you call the environment, and with the other aspect you are doing what you call the organism, the me, this uh, living body. But as you cannot conceive, possibly, the existence of a living body with no environment, that is the clue that the two are basically one. Like the two poles of a magnet, north is quite different from south, and yet it's all one magnet. So in precisely the same way, you, 